scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, and today I'm reading from the NRSV translation. Again, Matthew 21, 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They bought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Kevin Gray wrote, we wave palms because we have long awaited God's deliverance, and now we're within seven days of it. We wave because Jesus shows us life-saving answers when we feel crushed by problems threatening to overcome us. We wave palms because Jesus has set us free from the destructive longings of our fallen nature. We wave palms because the pilgrims who came to Jerusalem and gave thanks for the healing by Jesus that we too can really be healed in body, mind, and spirit. Indeed, the question for the day is, who is this? That is the question for all of the ages, the question that everyone must ask and answer for themselves. As we discussed last week, Jesus' own followers weren't exactly sure who he was. Some called him rabbi. Some believed that he was the Messiah that the Jews had long awaited for. Twice they referred to him as son of God, but nobody yet had the full picture. And it was that that brought tears to Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. And just before today's scripture reading picks up, before they enter into Jerusalem, he heals two blind men. And they refer to him as Lord and Son of David. So he travels to Jerusalem. Crowds are following from Jericho in front and behind him. One theologian wrote that this is a triumphal entry but one that parodies the entry of kings and their armies. This is the entry of the one who come to serve, but that he has come to serve certainly makes him no less of a king. As Jesus approaches the city, no doubt the question is asked many times, some in idle curiosity, some perhaps in doubting hesitation, and some eager with the hope that the answer was going to announce their new king. So Jesus sent two disciples ahead to get a colt and a donkey. Matthew tells us this was done to fulfill scripture. And if you think about it, everywhere else that we read about Jesus traveling, he always walked. This is the only place in scripture where Jesus rides on an animal. He does this to fulfill the prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. He is righteous and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This is a deliberate action by Jesus, and it identifies himself to the Jews as a king, something that Pilate and the Roman rulers would have considered treason. 
We often call this entry into the city, we call it the triumphant entry. But this was a king that was born in a stable, slept in a manger. This is a king that came to serve, not to be served, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Those that led him into the city and those that were following behind, they kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna is a Hebrew word, and it literally means save us. Save us. And when they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that is from Psalm 118, a part of which we recited on our entry in the call to worship this morning, and a, a psalm that is traditionally sung at each Passover feast. So we have a large, large number of people following Jesus into the city. They've come from Jericho. The crowds in Jerusalem are already there because the, the Passover is a week away. So the crowds are already building, and they're, they're excited as Jesus enters the city. Those that are already there aren't really sure what all the commotion is at the gate. And so they ask, who is this? There's a word that Matthew uses, and if any of you are fluent in Hebrew, I apologize for my pronunciation, but the word is esiesti, esiesti. He uses that word to describe Jesus entering into the city, and depending on what translation you read, it usually gets translated into English as stirred up or in turmoil. And what that word actually means, though, is the study of earthquakes. The study of earthquakes. Matthew is telling us that as Jesus enters Jerusalem, the whole town is shook up. It's in turmoil. He used that word two other times in his gospel. One was with the earthquake, when the earth shook at Jesus' death, and the other, another earthquake just before the resurrection. So think about it. Imagine being there some 2,000 years ago. You're in the city on that day. Who is this, they asked. A huge procession starts coming by your door, making lots of noise, shouting in celebration. And you're like, Passover's a week away. What are these people doing? And they keep coming by in numbers and numbers, and you want to know what's going on. And the very ground beneath your feet starts to tremble. And some of your neighbors keep asking and then a reply, you know, who is this coming in here on a donkey? And you hear someone say, this is the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Okay, that's true enough, I guess. It's certainly not a complete answer. And it is very nice to see that Jesus did get a day, a moment in time and before everyone turns on him. Because let's not forget the crowd that shouts, Hosanna, Hosanna, in just a week is going to be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. So the crowd says, who is this? If you read Matthew's gospel, he's been trying to answer that question from the very first verse. Matthew opens his gospel with the genealogy of Jesus, linking him as a son of David and the son of Abraham. And Matthew goes on in describing in different places that Jesus is the Christ, that he is Emmanuel, which means God with us, that he is the king of the Jews, a prince and a shepherd, the Lord, the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, my beloved son. And friends, that's just in the first three verses. Matthew spends an entire gospel trying to tell us who Jesus is. Jesus himself answered the question, but you're going to have to refer to John's gospel. He answered it several times to those that would listen to him. He answered it by saying, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. 
I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. Yeah, we all need to decide for ourselves who this Jesus really is. He enters Jerusalem in a humble manner. And thinking about that, St. Augustine once wrote that the humility of Christ is the medicine of man's swollen pride. The humility of Christ is the medicine for man's swollen pride. He didn't come to be served, but to serve. He made the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life as a ransom for me. And to those that are not in right relationship with him, those who are not believers, he stands at the door and he knocks. In thinking about that, Samuel Shoemaker wrote this. He said, not to the gates of Jerusalem alone does Jesus ride today, but to the gates of our hearts. There he waits, knocking and knocking, and his, his knuckles must be raw by now. The general wrath has been going on so long and it's smothered by the contemporary rivals that some of us can barely hear it over the noise of all the other things we have going on. But he still goes on standing there. He still stands there. My friends, this day let us answer the knock at our door. Let us do as Jesus requested at the Last Supper and meet him this morning in his table.